The structure of DNA. DNA molecules must somehow specify how to assemble proteins, which are needed to regulate the various functions of each cell. What kind of structure could serve this purpose without varying from cell to cell? Understanding the structure of DNA has been the key to understanding how genes work. DNA is a nucleic acid made up of nucleotides joined into long strands or chains by covalent bonds. Nucleic acids are long, slightly acidic molecules originally identified in cell nuclei. Nucleic acids are made up of nucleotides linked together to form long chains. The nucleotides that make up DNA are shown below. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. And each of these have a base. They all have a dioxyribose carbon chain and a phosphate group. DNA's nucleotides are made up of three basic components, a five carbon sugar called dioxyribose, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. The four nitrogenous bases for DNA are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. The nucleotides in a strand of DNA are joined by covalent bonds formed between their sugar and phosphate groups, dioxyribose sugar, and the phosphate group. DNA has four kinds of nitrogenous bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. The nitrogenous bases stick out sideways from the nucleotide chain. The nucleotides can be joined together in any order, meaning that any sequence of bases is possible, whether A, G, C, T, or A, G, T, C, or G, A, T, C, any of those orders work, including A, 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 repeating the same base. How did scientists discover the structure of DNA? The clues of Franklin's X-ray pattern enabled Watson and Crick to build a model that explained the specific structure of properties of DNA. Erwin Chargraff discovered that the percentage of adenine and thymine bases are almost always equal in any sample of DNA. The same thing is true for the other two nucleotides, guanine and cytosine. The observation that A is equal to T and G is equal to C became known as one of Chargaff's rules. In the 1950s, British scientist Rosalind Franklin used a technique called X-ray diffraction to get information about the structure of the DNA molecule. X-ray diffraction revealed an X-shaped pattern showing that the strands in DNA are twisted around each other like the coils of a spring. The angle of the X-shaped pattern suggested that there are two strands in the structure. Other clues suggested that the nitrogenous bases are near the center of the DNA molecule. At the time, James Watson, an American biologist, and Francis Crick, a British physicist, were also trying to understand the structure of DNA. They built three-dimensional models of the molecule. Early in 1953, Watson was shown a copy of Franklin's X-ray pattern. The clues in Franklin's X-ray pattern enabled Watson and Crick to build a model that explained the specific structure and properties of DNA. Watson and Crick's breakthrough model of DNA was a double helix in which two strands were wound around each other. What does the double helix model tell us about DNA? The double helix model explains Chargraff's rule of base pairing and how the two strands of DNA are held together. A double helix looks like a twisted ladder. In the double helix model of DNA, the two strands twist around each other like spiral staircases. The double helix accounted for Franklin's X-ray pattern and explained Chargaff's rule of base pairing and how the two strands of DNA are held together. In the double helix model, the two strands of DNA are anti-parallel. They run in opposite directions. This arrangement enables the nitrogenous bases 
on both strands to come into contact at the center of the molecule. It also allows each strand of the double helix to carry a sequence of nucleotides arranged almost like letters in a four letter alphabet. Watson and Crick discovered that hydrogen bonds could form between the certain nitrogenous bases, providing just enough force to hold the two DNA strands together. Hydrogen bonds are relatively weak chemical forces that allow the two strands of the helix to separate. The ability of the two strands to separate is critical to DNA's function. Hydrogen bonds separate them and they're bound together in pairs. Guanine, cytosine, adenine, thymine. Watson and Crick's model showed that hydrogen bonds could create a nearly perfect fit between nitrogenous bases along the center of the molecule. These bases would form only between certain base pairs, adenine with thymine and guanine with cytosine. This nearly perfect fit between AT and GC nucleotides is known as base pairing and is illustrated in the figure. Guanine matched with cytosine, adenine matched with thymine. Watson and Crick realized that the base pairing explained Chargaff's rule. It gave a reason why A equals T and G equals C. For every adenine in a double-stranded DNA molecule, there had to be exactly one thymine. For every cytosine, there was one guanine.